Hello! In this lecture, I'm going to tell you about place of articulation. We already said that to describe consonants, we use voicing, place of articulation, and manner of articulation. So, what is place of articulation? You already know that we produce voice in the larynx and we make all speech sounds with the air coming out through the larynx. But after that, after the voice is produced, it still has to go through the rest of the vocal tract. And here we can modify what it sounds like. Um, so when we produce the voice, it then goes through your throat or pharynx here and then it can go out through your mouth and through your nose and depending on what's happening in your pharynx or your mouth or your nose the sound is going to be different. Um, so we use that, we use our articulators in the vocal tract to change the sound and in this way produce many different consonants. And when we describe um, those consonants, we can talk about which parts of the vocal tract are involved. So what is moving when we make a particular speech sound? And also where it is moving. So in which part of the vocal tract uh, is the constriction happening? So the parts of our anatomy that are moving when we make sounds are active articulators. So for example, of course, tongue. The tongue is um, the most important example, but also your lips, they move too. So those are the active articulators. But then when you think about it, you can move your tongue in many different areas in your mouth. And that will also produce different sounds. Um, so those places where the tongue moves are passive articulators. For example, your teeth. You can't move your teeth, right? If you want to make a sound, with your tongue and your teeth, then your tongue is moving to your teeth, but your teeth are not moving. So the tongue is the active articulator and the teeth are passive articulator. And we describe place of articulation by referring to the passive articulators. So where is something happening? And this is a diagram that I would like you to know very well. And you will see this shows you all of the places of articulation, all of the places in your mouth where the tongue can move, or sometimes the lips. So you see we have the lips, and then teeth, which we can also use, and then right behind the teeth is the alveolar ridge, this little bit that's sticking out. Then we have the hard palate here and the soft palate in the back. And we have the uvula, which is the little bit that's hanging at the entrance to your throat. If you open your mouth, you'll see it. And finally, we have the pharynx, which is far behind the tongue. And so depending on which place um, the sound is produced in, it carries the name of that place. So um, sounds produced with your lips are called bilabial and sounds produced with your lips and your teeth are labiodental and sound produced, sounds produced um, just between your teeth are dental or interdental. 
and so on. So for any speech sound, um, you have to imagine or feel or think about where this sound is produced. If you look, for example, at this first example here, you will see that this part of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, is touching the alveolar ridge. So the place of articulation will be based on the passive articulator here, which is the alveolar ridge. So the place of articulation for this sound will be alveolar. And this shows you the sound t, t. Now on the second diagram, you'll see that it's the back of the tongue that is touching the soft palate or velum. And that's where the constriction is made and that's how the sound is made. And so the passive articulator here is the velum. This is where this constriction is happening. So the place of articulation of this sound is going to be velar. And the sound made here is k. Okay, so we can describe every single speech sound in this way. And for every single speech sound, um, we can describe the passive and the active articulator. So these are all of the places of articulation that you will also see on the IPA chart. And this is what they mean. Um, so a, a consonant that has a bilabial place of articulation, what it means is that the active articulator is upper and lower lips. They're both moving. In this case, there is no passive articulator because both upper and lower lips are moving. Then if you look further down for labial dental sound, it means that the active articulator is the lower lip and the passive articulator, the one that's not moving, is the upper teeth. So we are moving the lower lip to touch the upper front teeth. So this is sounds like th and so you see this table is here for you but it's not something that you have to memorize um, it's more about paying attention to which parts of your mouth are moving when making different speech sounds where is the tongue going so the most important thing is that you know the names for the different parts of the mouth. And if you know that, then you will always know what the place of articulation of any consonant is. Um, some sounds will have the same passive and active articulators. So for example, when you say p, b, m, you make them with the same articulators, in this case, lips, m, b. So the place of articulation um, is the same. The same is true of alveolar sounds, t, d, n, l. We make them with the tip of our tongue, which is the active articulator, touching the alveolar ridge right behind your teeth which is the passive articulator, and this is why they're called alveolar. And for those sounds which have the same passive and active articulator, we call them homorganic. And yet another thing about place of articulation is that sometimes some sounds can have more than one place of articulation. Um, this means basically that to produce those sounds, we make more than one constriction. And for example, if you say w, 
w and you pay attention to what's happening in your mouth, you will feel that you're raising um, the back of your tongue. W. So you're using your lips and you're also moving the back of your tongue towards the velum. Um, so w has two places of articulation, labial and velar. We call it a labiovelar consonant. And those sounds we call complex articulations. So I told you about passive and active articulators. And when we describe what's happening in the mouth, we can talk about how the active articulators are moving or where they're going. And we can study that using palatography, which records where the active articulator touched the passive articulator. So I would like you to watch the video um, in the link in the description of this lecture, uh, which shows you how palatography is used. I'll see you in class.